Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I need to clear off the desk. These are fun, but they're gonna have to go. I know. Spent a while wiping dirt off the table. Don't know why. Have a whole bunch of plants here to unbox. I'm gonna get dirt all over the place. Cleaning up didn't even matter. Been very excited to get these opened up. They showed up a little while ago and I had to get some things done. These boxes are actually from two different orders. They both say Hertz on them. Have Hertz right here and Hertz right there, Hertz Gardens. I was browsing Hertz website. There were a few plants that I wanted for myself and several that I wanted to use for other things and loaded up a shopping cart and then got to the shipping and was like, oh, oh really? Really, really Hertz, $100.99. To be exact and i was like well i can't do that i can do that for a huge plant order but this wasn't a huge plant order i mean they were like i don't know maybe a dozen or less small plants in the cart but then i remembered at one point i had been on walmart's website and noticed that the plants there not all of them but some of the plants they sold and shipped by hertz so then i went through walmart's website and filled up a cart with the things that i could that were on my cart on Hertz website and uh, the shipping came out to $14.99. So I ended up doing two different orders. I had thought about just scrapping a whole bunch of the plants to get into, you know, one order, but there were several that I really wanted from Hertz that they didn't have on the Walmart website. And then I was like, well, this could be an interesting thing to show in a video too, right? $100 shipping versus $14.99 shipping from the same place, but different hosts. All right, I don't want to go on with this too terribly long. I'm more excited about seeing the plants than the shipping comparison, but I thought it was a fun thing to talk about and let you all went on that little loophole. We'll see if there's a difference in the quality of the packaging as I open these up. I'm fairly certain this package right here is the one from Hertz website, which was the one with the $69 shipping. Shipping label on that one says eight pound, eight pounds a plants there where that $70 shipping came from. This one over here, upside down, that says 14 pounds. Just assume the smaller box is one from Hertz because I didn't order as many plants from them as I did from Walmart. Open these up, give these plants a chance to breathe, see how the plants are looking and see if there's a difference in shipping between them. Doesn't look like there will be a difference. That's, that's looking pretty much the same to me. Not seeing a difference here, but go ahead and dig in. I did notice when I was placing the order that uh, through Walmart, there was like an, an add-on option when checking out that was like a landscape or like greenery service, like a consultation you could add to your order, which was I think $99. I don't know, I don't know what it was. I didn't click on it, it was a hundred bucks. I don't, I don't know what that was about. Go ahead and open the one that's directly from Hertz first. And then can compare what those look like compared to the shipping from the other. I don't think there's going to be a difference, but who knows? I'm more interested in the plants. There's some neat plants in here. Can you tell? Anybody can tell what's in here? Is this suspense killing you? That's not my intention. I'm sorry. Wasn't trying to drag this on. Oh, finally. This is a plant that I have been trying to get a hold of for many years. They're not rare by any means. This is a silver tree fern. I ordered three of them because like I said, they're plants I've been trying to get a hold of for several years. Every time I order them from a website, they end up sending silver lace ferns, but it'll say it's a silver lady fern, but it's a silver lace fern. Silver lace ferns are not at all the same. Lovely plants, but not the same. That's a really nice looking healthy plant. Not many blemishes, there's some soil on the leaves, but that's to be expected. Whenever a plant is shipped to me, I usually just assume that it's going to show up looking like 20% garbagey and junky. Maybe 10%. I always like to have some leeway there just because, you know, things get bounced around the boxes and it's winter also, so that influences how the plants look, but they're looking pretty good. Is there a heat pack in here? Yes, there is. There is a heat pack. But when the plants are wrapped in bubble wrap and the heat pack is underneath on the bottom and there's no lining, within the container. I, I don't know how much use a heat pack is. Don't need to be overly critical because things look good in here. I didn't even notice this. You see that? I had no idea. That was super nifty. Was the camera not focusing? All right. Things are taped well so the soil's contained as it should be. I always appreciate masking tape in these containers. When it's the packaging tape, I usually have to go in with a box cutter to free it up. And I feel like it's maybe more recyclable or at least will decompose fast. I don't know. I have no idea. That's, just forget I said that. This one has a tag, so you can see it better. The other one may have had the tag. It was just down inside of it. So dwarf tree fern, I've talked about these before, is like 
plants I've wanted to get my hands on. Like num jibum. I, I may have been saying that wrong. I don't know. I've never heard anybody else say it, so I never paid attention. Got that fun furry hairy inside along the gross. I love the dwarf tree ferns because they have that, you know, monopodial growth. They end up looking fairly similar to like a Tasmanian tree fern or Australian tree fern, but so much smaller. Look at those. So cute, such pretty foliage. Really nice, healthy, full plants. Hardly any damage on them, just a little bit of browning on the edge of this frond over here, but like I said, that's really not a big deal. I don't expect plants to come in the mail looking 100%. Not seeing any critters on them or any snails or anything crawling around on them. Oh, they're so cute. Cannot wait until they start to get some little trunks on them. This one, I think I can just pull right out. Yeah, there we go. And pretty good, nice and healthy. Isn't that a beauty? Gorgeous variegation in this plant. I was about to say the texture is really cool and I remember to have liquid band-aid on my fingers, so that's why that felt neat. Cryptanthus earth star plants. This one is called absolute zero. Isn't that cool? Look at that pink streak that's running through that leaf. Pink margins, then they have that greenish silvery variegation on the inside. At the end of the video, I'll try and have things laid out on the desk and have better shots of them. Maybe I'll do that between boxes, get this one opened up. We can have a better look at these plants. Another one I'm very, I don't need to say I'm excited about all of these. If I ordered it, I'm excited about it. So this one's looking more like what I expect fern to look like when it's been sitting in the mail. A little bit crispy. This is a relatively unknown plant to me. Anything about the foliage look familiar? Probably not. This is a hybrid. This is called a diamond fern. I think it's the Nicholas diamond fern. Oh, look at those fuzzy, fun rhizomes. This is a hybrid fern between the uh, Flebodium. Flebodium, I can never say it. Like the blue star fern. Really tough, sturdy ferns. They grow with a good amount of vigor. Not normally as fussy about humidity. And then the other parent of the plant is a uh, pyrosia, which are tongue ferns. Tongue ferns are really great. They have a nice glossy foliage on them. They look very lush, but they can be more demanding of humidity when being grown indoors as a house plant and they grow like snails. So the thought here is that having both of those plants married together, kind of getting the best of both worlds, get some neat looking fun foliage and then more vigor and sturdiness. Time will tell, we will see, excuse you, Leaf. I don't know if this is going to show, should be able to see it. It does look like there's a smidge bit of molds on the surface of the soil, not the end of the world. This is out where it can breathe. Hit it with just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, let that sit on there for a moment and then flush it out. That will help kill off that mold. One thing I have noticed though, is that this plant has a lot of ants on it and some mystery speckling that comes off to the touch on the foliage. So before this hangs out with the other plants too terrible long, I'm gonna take this inside and blast the foliage with some water and get it cleaned up. Okay, there we go. Gave that a wash and hit it pretty heavily with a mild insecticidal soap. Again, just to be safe. One last look at those fun fuzzy roots. Very similar to a rabbit's foot fern. Isn't that cool? Neat looking plant. I'm going to be interested to see how sturdy it actually is. I'm going to put it to the test. I'm not baby in this thing. Really fun, interesting hybrid. Now I'm going to go put this in a different room where it's not near my entire plant collection. Okay, box number two. What just fell off my desk? I know I just laid that out right across a puddle on the desk, but I figured it doesn't matter. I'm cutting this up and it's going out to the recycling here in a few minutes anyway. Little damp cardboard's no big deal. All right, packaging looks pretty much the same. And a heat pack in the middle. It's safe to say there's not much of a difference between the package that was $70 to ship. Would have been 100, but I removed just enough plants to bring that down. I don't want to spend $100 on shipping. Not just to do a little comparison. I'm going to start with these because I can already tell what they are. Loving that seam. That's nifty. Lobodium artium. Blue star ferns. Plants that used to be able to find absolutely everywhere in great big hanging baskets for like 12 bucks, but I haven't seen them in a long time. And these are a favorite of mine. I've gotten these to underplant around some other plants. They're really sturdy plants. Is this pot shaped kind of funny or did they just really go to town with that plastic wrap? Interested to see here. I think it was just wrapped really, really, really tight. There does appear to be a difference with how the pots are wrapped. A lot of plastic wrap here, then a paper on the inside to keep the soil in place. There's a difference, that plastic wrap, that was definitely on tight enough. Like, did it really need to be so tight that it cinched in the side of the container? Maybe, perhaps, I don't know. All I care about is that the plants look good. As far as the practice of 
packaging the plant is concerned. Environment wise, this, that's not great. You know, maybe this is the difference between the $14 shipping and the more expensive one. I tried to make sure that each order had a variety of sizes in the container so I could compare them. Pretty sure it was all four inch and six inch containers. So yeah, these look good, nice and healthy. You can see the rhizomes that these were planted out from are nice and healthy, very firm. When it comes time to pull these out of their containers, we're gonna have to use a pair of scissors and cut them out because of that mess, but that's all right. All right, who's next? These are gonna take an eternity to open, get all the plastic off the pots. Uh, what? Okay, another absolute zero or star. I don't remember ordering these from each website, but apparently I did. I had meant to order, there were two different cryptanthus out, it doesn't matter. Calathea, rattlesnake calathea, love the foliage. Beautiful calathea. Top of the leaves look like they've been painted on. There should be another calathea in here. There's the other one. Some of these plants are too pretty to have a cardboard box sitting behind them. So I'm going to speed through opening up the rest of these just so you can see what the packaging looks like. Although the packaging does seem very consistent. It looks like it's going to be the same throughout the rest of these. That's a nice variegation. Look at that leaf. It looks more green in person. It's very pretty. Here's the one that I assumed would show up looking the absolute worst. You can kind of already tell looking through that bubble wrap that it struggled a little bit. I'm not surprised by that. One yellow leaf, not a big deal. Oh, look at that. How gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. This is the Hilo Beauty Caladium. There is some debate as to how the plant should be classified. I would consider it more of a Caladium. Last one. It didn't fall, it's right here. Another Calathea. Beautiful one too, looks very healthy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, get the plastic off of these plants and we can go in and have a better look at them. And give some names. I don't think I even named what all these were, did I? There we go. That feels nice. Just sit down at the desk with the plants and be able to have a much better look at them. So the ones that I didn't end up naming off as I opened them were, I believe the Calatheas. This is a White Star Calathea. As far as the Calatheas are concerned, I have some of my favorite variegation of the Calatheas. Very, very vibrant and colorful Calathea. Actually, do I need to turn my exposure down just a smidge so you can see through that white? There we go. There's a nice look at that variegation. The White Star Calatheas have beautiful foliage. It has that white with that blush pink towards the middle that comes out further as the foliage ages the pink intensifies. The white's usually more on the outer leaves. And these are all just little babies, tiny calatheas. They will grow. They were relatively inexpensive, at least for how much plants cost these days. They were relatively inexpensive. Pretty sure we already talked about the rattlesnakes. So the fusion, yellow fusion, pretty sure I've heard this go by multiple names. Isn't that a pretty one? It is thirsty, very thirsty. It's the most thirsty of the group. I have it sitting in a reservoir here, some water so that it can have a nice drink and plump back up. I love the variegation on the fusion. As if the green and the white have swapped places on the foliage. So where there would normally be white, there's a lighter green. They call it yellow. It looks pretty green to me. Very faint coloration to the undersides of the foliage. Has a slight sparkle to it on the undersides and the foliage on top. Just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I'm looking forward to seeing this one grow up. <laughs> I laugh because, you know, they're Calatheas, so we'll see what happens there. Two of my favorite Calatheas right here. So pretty. This <laughs> will look better when that pops up. All three of these look pretty darn good. Normally when I get Calatheas in the mail, there's a lot of cleaning up I have to do with them, which is in no way a surprise, right? Calatheas, they tend to be fairly fussy plants just as a whole. Not all of them. The Stromanthi type, like the Trio Star, excellent. Very simple to grow a colorful plant compared to some of the others. Rattlesnakes should be fine. These two? Yeah, we'll see what they look like in a couple of weeks. I would imagine there might be a bit of a break-in period for them. Sometimes they'll throw a little tiny bit of a hissy fit after being shipped, uh, especially if the temperature changes. It's mostly, I think, just related to them <laughs> drying out for just a smidge. Just a little bit of drying out and then <laughs> nice and humid out here, so they should be all right. This is a very nice looking plant, very healthy. The yellow fusion is one that I've been trying to get a hold of for a while, but I was waiting to find it for a reasonable price. This was $45, so that's not, not that cheap, but the majority of the ones that I have found for sale are from overseas and they have to be shipped from like Indonesia or Thailand, which there's nothing wrong with. Once you factor everything that goes into that, I was like, I think I'd rather just spend the 45. I was glad to find one for sale in the US, just 
faster shipping, less damage and risk to the plant, and it's just a lot easier. But I think that they're starting to gain some more popularity and the supply is starting to go up on them. Prices on them are not quite as insane as they were for a while. This is Sansevieria La Rubia, La Rubia, which I think or thought it might be the same as the gold flame, but I don't think it is. It's kind of hard to tell. They look very similar. The gold flame, I think the uh, leaves on here are going to be more broad and somewhat more stout, but that can be affected by how the plant's been grown off too. The type of lighting and those sorts of things can affect the shape, but it's a nice sturdy looking, big healthy plant. I really enjoy the variegation on it. A very bright yellow. On the camera, it just looks kind of dead. In person, there's a good amount of green in there, and it looks pretty good. It's a Sansevieria. Not much to say about it, just a really pretty one. That's pretty much everything, right? Here's a slightly better look at the Hilo Beauty elephant ear. Don't expect much to happen with that. I assume that it's going to do what all of the elephant ears do, whether that be a Colocasia or an Alocasia or a Xanthosoma, Caladium. Generally, when they're shipped around and moved, they tend to just go absolutely bonkers and drop their foliage. So have a nice look. Take it in because I would imagine it's probably going to end up shedding those leaves and start over from the corn, which isn't a big deal. That's what I expected it to do. Okay, the Cryptanthus. So what I think happened here on Hertz website, this was the Cryptanthus Absolute Zero. It's just so pretty. Then there's one from Walmart, or not Walmart, Hertz via Walmart. This one was just labeled as Rainbow Cryptanthus. Pretty sure they're the same plant, but I don't know. I haven't looked into it. It doesn't matter. They're pretty. That's all I cared about. Okay, so here's what happened. It wasn't until I was editing this video that I connected the dots, because I was like, wait, the absolute zero, that looked totally different. Originally, there were two Cryptanthus in my Hertz cart, and one of them was available from Walmart, which was the Cryptanthus rainbow, so I went ahead and ordered that one from Walmart, and they didn't have the other one, which was the absolute zero, so I ordered the absolute zero from Hertz. It says absolute zero on the invoice, but there's, there's two rainbows. These are Cryptanthus rainbow. Absolutely beautiful. I love them. Not mad about having two of them, but here's what the absolute zero looks like. Yeah, definitely not the same. Like I said, I'm okay with having two of these. I'll contact them and let them know they sent me the wrong plant, but I'm, I'm kind of fine with it, to be honest. Yeah, so there's that. Back to the video. Cryptanthus. Love them. Long-lived, sturdy plants with lots of color on them. Very unlike the Calatheas, which are beautiful, colorful plants, but that long-lived part? Meh. We'll see. Oh, and the uh, diamond fern. I realized that with that having the parent, with one of them being the phlebodium, that that powdery stuff was probably just spore fallout because the, uh, well, the blue star ferns, they do the same thing. So I will bring that back out here. That's more than likely all that was. It didn't look like anything I recognized pest-wise. I was just probably being a little bit overly cautious there. Or actually not cautious enough because I didn't take the other plants that were in the box with it into quarantine, so already. Didn't make much sense. Overall, the shipping for both the packages I thought was good. It was a huge waste of plastic on the one that was $14.99 shipping and took a lot longer to open the plants up, but the plants themselves, they all arrived looking good and healthy. Plastic was wrapped a little bit too tight on some of these pots. There's a lot of crimpage and squishing going on in there, but it's all right. They still look good, that's all that matters. I only had to trim off one leaf from this whole thing, and that was the one from this Hilo Beauty over here that was yellowing off. But everything's looking nice and happy and healthy. The Hilo Beauty I know is a bit of a mess, but that's pretty much what I expected. So much color, I know I keep saying it, but it's because I'm excited about it. I'm loving the Calatheas, the Cryptanthus. I'm super excited about the tree ferns back here. I've been trying to get them for such a long time. Like I said, every single time I get sent the wrong plants. Seemingly, no matter who I order them from, maybe four or five years, been trying to get a hold of those. I haven't tried super hard. It's only like once a year I'd order them and get sent the wrong plants and then just give up and wait another year. This time, glad, finally got it right. Those are going to look really cool someday. Right now, they just look like really pretty ferns. In a few years, those will get some trunks on them. They'll look pretty cool. Like, they look like a miniature tree fern. So that's what they are. I had pretty good luck with Hertz over the last few years. It was interesting to compare the shipping. Not drastically different. Well, not drastically different as far as their process, cost-wise. Very different. I really should wrap this up, get these plants moved over to the plant shelves. Give them some more water, because I just gave them a light drink, other than this Calathea here in the middle. Comment down below, say hi, love talking to everybody. Where have you been ordering your plants from? Places you trust, particularly during the winter time, that's when it gets really tricky, right? 
You never know how things are going to ship during the winter. Always fun hearing from everybody. What are your thoughts on that shipping situation? I thought it was pretty interesting, as always. And most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.